It's Wednesday. Let's chat. Hi, I'm Kanan Chandran and this is a Wet Web Chat, our regular series of discussions about things that are topical and things that are on our mind and things that we want to get off our chest. And well, uh, the announcement uh, of uh, the spread of COVID and the need to have uh, stricter measures in place to try and contain the issue has meant that we are back to working from home, we are back to smaller groups of people meeting um, and we have to be a lot more cautious for a while now. So what do we do? How do we then uh, move forward? Uh, I think a lot of it goes back to what we've been doing all this while, which is going into the virtual space and having our Zoom calls and our Zoom conversations. Uh, and uh, that's going to be around for a while, I think. Uh, judging from the way the virus is spreading and the mutations that are coming up, it's going to be a tricky one to try and handle. We've still not got the better of it yet. So today's session, it's about looking at how we can make the most of this virtual environment and try and see what we can do to make it as close to our physical discussions with people. And today's uh, panelists uh, are quite well regarded in their respective areas and are uh, have made good use of this uh, virtual environment to, to trans, uh, sort of make the transition from a physical uh, to online space. So we've got bright and early for him, Robin Kermode, uh, founder and communication coach and author. <clears throat> um, and he's got a podcast which uh, reaches out to almost 35,000 people and a podcast where he reads stories to, to children as well. Um, he's a respected media commentator as well, and uh, as a communications coach, he's been working with senior leaders, politicians, and corporate teams uh, globally. Uh, Robin has been an actor for over 30 years and is a recognizable voiceover artist. Uh, and he's also a leading body language expert for the media. Thank you for getting up early and joining us, uh, Robin. Welcome Thank you for having session. me. Very, very good. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. We also have Michelle Lam. She's a founder of the Little Black Book. Uh, she used to work in the in corporate bureaucracy for eleven years before setting up uh, her new uh, outfit, which is now about twelve years old. Uh, she wanted to do something new and different, so she saw an opportunity with the rise of social media, the online and mobile platforms, and started focusing on video, both long and short form. And uh, that sort of appeals to today's generation where they like things uh, to unfold in front of them on their screens. So welcome, Michelle, uh, to today's session. Thank you, Kanan. And, um, and making up the, the trio of uh, panelists is Kamal Samuel, the Managing Director of the Singapore uh, Arm of Financial PR. Uh, Kamal joined uh, Financial PR in uh, 20, 2006 and was head of the group's technology team before taking on his current position. Uh, he communicates complex engineering stories to the broad investment community, and he is now responsible for providing clients with strategic advice and strengthening the group's position in the Singapore market. Welcome, Kamal. Hello, everyone, Welcome. and uh, yeah, pleasure to uh, see everyone today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just let's look at this virtual space and and what's happening here. You know. Um, are we at all comfortable with doing things virtually? What has your experience been? Well, I, I think if, if, I, if I jump in there, I think it was really interesting and I think it's changed over time. So when the pandemic started uh, almost a year ago now, uh, people, the clients were saying to me that at the end of the day, they were exhausted. They were finding this constant video uh, interaction very, very tiring. And I think that was for various reasons. Partly, I think it was new to us all and we weren't behaving naturally. So I think one of the things that we've learned to do over the year is we've got much more comfortable with this with this medium. So initially it was about, we have to make the background perfect. We have to, I even had a client who, um, I looked at the, his background and I said, you've got a very smart grand piano in the background. I said, was that grand piano always in that part of the sitting room? And he said, no, no, I put it there to look good on the Zoom call. So I think initially a lot of people did that, would try to sort of make themselves look as smart as possible, or they put up fancy backgrounds and things. But mainly I don't think people were sitting properly. So they were kind of sitting like a TV presenter, like, rather like this, as if they sort of were, were, were too formal and, and they never moved. And if you never move, it's very tiring. 
And I think now what happens is, is I'm certainly, you know, encouraging people to feel that this is almost, almost as if we're having a coffee together. So what would you do if you were having a coffee together with somebody? Well, the answer is you'd move on different times. You know, maybe I'd, I'd lean back and I'd cross my legs and I'd have a sip and then I'd lean forward and I'd say, so, you know, come on, why is that? You know, and, and we'd, we'd kind of move a bit. And I think if we move a little bit, we don't get so tired. And the other thing I think physically um, is, is the voice because um, there's a tendency, I think, for people to feel they have to project because the, the screen is sort of at this distance away and the other person is therefore mirrored the other distance. So there's a, a sense of having to slightly project the voice, which A, is not human, but also is tiring for the voice. So I think both those things we've got much better at. Mm, okay. It's a, a lot of it is psychological, isn't it? Mm. Uh, especially the projection part of it. I mean, if your microphone is designed to pick up your voice, then you shouldn't have too much of an issue. Well, you shouldn't. I, I have a friend who's just bought a very lovely new car with a sort of inbuilt system. And, uh, you know, of course, the, so the microphone is up here by the mirror. And she, she calls me from the car. She's driving. She goes, I'm in the car. I'm getting, you don't have to shout. Right? It's designed. <laughs> the, the engineers know where you're sitting. So you should be able to go, I'm in the car. I'm you know, running 10 minutes late. I'll see you soon or something. But there's this kind of shouting thing going on. And uh, so I think we have to learn to trust the microphone. That's the other thing, because they're yeah. super sensitive microphones now. Yes. And now there are some, I know like the, some of the Audis have the microphone on the seatbelt, so when you pull it in, it's just here, so, wow. which is a lot easier. But of course, you need to know that the microphone is there, otherwise you'll still be shouting <laughs> and screaming. Of course, but, but, but even, even if the microphone is up here, of course, it's, it's a gun microphone. It's rather like at the Oscars, you get these, these, these actors who should know better, they come along with their envelope, and the microphone is down here on the podium. It's, and it's a gun microphone designed to be that distance away. And these mi actors who should know better really come in and they go, and the nominations are, and there's no need to sort of lean oh, in. Okay. <laughs> we, so I think we have to trust the microphone. Yeah. So, so Michelle, for you, you've been uh, working with videos for quite a while. Do you think your customer base is sort of, uh, okay, we can cope with this, it's not an issue? We have our fair share of challenges, uh, mm. even internally, yeah, even internally. And yeah. there's one experience with a new customer, uh, and uh, this customer, uh, so I had my colleague who didn't want to show the face because she had uh, eczema, so her, her cheeks would be very pink. And we agreed to say, okay, let's not show face since, you know, it's awkward if I show face and you don't want to show face. So, but because the software, I was not familiar with using the software, it's a Cisco WebEx. Um, mm -hmm. So it so happens that the, the software, um, I, I showed them my face, so I can't undo it anymore. So I went through the whole meeting showing my face and I was wearing some very thick glasses. So I have a um, 650 degrees, so it's really very thick and I look so awful and but I have to pull through with it. You so look these very are intellectual little, then. Just bit, I, I think I look horrible, <laughs> to be honest. So all, I'll fresh off challenges really. And uh, I guess mm. one year after in, into the whole situation, I think somehow I've learned a lot. And it's getting yeah. better, I hope. Okay. And yeah, that's there's why different <laughs> systems. Uh, so sorry, there's, there's yeah. different systems. Do they pose different issues? Come out in your case with the financial sector. Mm. Uh, I'm sure <clears throat> there are a lot of security <throat> issues that come along with uh, these virtual discussions, right? So oh, do yeah, you find yeah. yourself having to switch through different sort of uh, 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 programs? Uh, actually, you know, um, by now we are, we are familiar with, with all sorts. I, I have to say at the beginning we were quite honestly, we're fumbling, you know, <laughs> like uh, one client uses, you know, as you mentioned, WebEx, another one uses Teams, we got Zoom. Uh, the other day I had, a, I had, a, I had to re-educate myself included, included how to use Skype because we had a call with BBC yeah. and apparently yeah. BBC only likes to use Skype. And I was like, of course we know how to use Skype, you know, but uh, <laughs> actually we, we, had, we had forgotten, right? We got so used to the new age of Zoom, 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 and Zoom is everywhere now. Mm. Um, but I'd like to, um, you know, maybe uh, shed a little bit of light about <clears throat> listed companies, uh, disclosure standards, and uh, what's happening in uh, these kind of meetings. Um, so previously, I mean, currently now, you know, with, with all these um, digital meetings, webinars, we, we currently have a lot of corporate access through uh, Zoom, uh, corporate access uh, for results briefings and so on. So. What has happened is because of the because of the fact that we cannot control who is recording anything, um, CEOs, CFOs are becoming uh, very cautious about what they say. 
Uh, as a result, they have started to read off scripts, uh, which are sadly and oftentimes prepared by ourselves because they're becoming very, very careful about what they say. If they say the wrong thing, if they uh, insinuate, for example, that next quarter is going to be much better than the previous quarter, I mean, these can have serious ramifications. Um, so what is happening uh, is that actually I find that um, these briefings are becoming uh, processions uh, to a certain extent. And the how comfortable these guys, the body language that they, they, they portray in front of the institutional investors and analysts. I mean, people are not extracting uh, the same value from these calls. And I find that um, uh, less, it is a little bit less effective than what it used to be. Hmm. So, but you still have the interaction, right? You still can field questions from the audience. So you can, but you respond to that, which you can't script. No, no. So, so, uh, well, generally, the, the, the investor relations firm or the public relations firm would definitely uh, prepare the CEO or the CFO very extensively for all sorts of questions. Uh, generally, the good questions you don't have to be prepared for because the <laughs> CEOs generally know how to talk about good things. But the bad things, you you know, we, we should definitely um, try to disclose as much as possible and be fair to the, you know, to the listeners as much as possible, as much as we can disclose, of course. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it is not as straightforward anymore. Uh, and, and, you know, it maybe it's a little bit of a, a, a tricky topic to broach, but um, definitely you can glean more from an in-person conversation uh, than uh, on a video chat for a listed company, I feel. Yeah. Mm. Yes, this is is interesting. I had, I had a client who, who uh, is a CEO of a big uh, global asset manager and he had to hire a new CFO and this had to happen during the early lockdown in the UK. And the guy did, did quite a good interview on Zoom and it was all fine and they met several times and it was all fine, but all by video. And there was a moment uh, last year where things were opened up a little bit and he was able to go out for an in-person dinner. And he discovered over dinner, by the way this man was interacting with other people, particularly the waiters who he was rather rude to, um, that he never would have hired him under normal circumstances. And he said, it's, it's, you know, there are some things you can't tell just on the video. People can present very well uh, on, on video, um, but it's how they, how they interact in the workplace and in, in, you know, in restaurants and in life. Uh, we don't always, don't always see that. I think something really interesting, uh, Kamali was saying there about mm. CEOs reading off script is, I mean, I, I prepare a lot of, uh, you know, mm. C-suite for this kind of thing. And, and, and one of the things that I do is they say, if you want to have a script is we have to make the script uh, conversational. So you have to write it in a conversational way. And the trouble is generally that the people who write the scripts, who, who are uh, analysts and, and um, the sort of legal team in a way, are trying to write it in such a, a careful way that in the end, it kind of doesn't say anything. And also it doesn't roll off the tongue. So I think one of the ways of, of uh, that, that I certainly work with politicians and things is we, we try to say, so what are we really saying? And we put the same legalese, as it were, into slightly shorter sentences and slightly more natural sentences. So that when you read it, it actually sounds like you're, um, you know, speaking. I know when I wrote my book on how to make speeches, I dictated it because I wanted it. I wanted the reader to think it's just like Robin's talking to me. And you can only do that if, if you if you speak it, if you type it, you're going to end up with yeah. longer sentences and, and type sentences are, you know, more like sort of, you know, uh, 12 to, to 18, uh, 21 words long, that's slightly longer than how we speak. So I think sometimes uh, actually saying it out loud and thinking, well, if that's better, why don't we just put that down can be helpful. Yeah, I think, Robin, you, you speak a lot of sense. And I have to say that I think there's been a gradual or must, probably a rapid evolution of a lot of these mm. uh, CEOs, CFOs capabilities as they got more comfortable, they realized, you know, hang on, this is not too bad. You know, the questions coming at me, uh, you know, aren't too crazy. Uh, so so I, even, even now you can see, um, there's even a bit of reluctance from the board, at least I can speak for Singapore listed entities. Uh, there's a bit of reluctance amongst the board to have live Q and A's uh, during the AGMs. I think there was a recent article uh, that came out in the newspapers, uh, I think as much as a couple of one or two weeks ago about the number of listed companies that had live Q&A and actually only a very few had live Q&As. Mm. And I think, um, you know, of course, it's largely to do with, you know, can you manage the questions? Are the, do the questions make sense? So on and so forth. 
but I think there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of unnecessary fear, um, you know, which will be overcome with time and, and confidence and training, of course, yeah. And training, yeah. So I think uh, given that uh, we are in for another run with COVID and it's going to go on for a while, do you think your customers are going to uh, take this a bit more seriously and consider actually doing proper sessions to learn how to face a camera and interact with people virtually? Is that something that's on their on their to do list? Certain, certainly, for um, in, in my world, I mean, when you know when it, this all happened a year ago, I looked at my my calendar, which w was pretty full for the year because I do a lot of keynote speaking at conferences, and suddenly all the conferences fell off a cliff, and, and I looked at the end of the year, and I thought, well, this is this is quite a void suddenly, but very quickly people said, actually, you know, if people are going to have to connect this way, and they're going to have to sell, they're going to have to persuade via video then why did we train them on video and i think the big the big question for me is can it be as efficient can, uh, training somebody on and and connecting with somebody on video as it is in person and the answer is it's not quite the same but it's pretty close now i think it's pretty close but it's i think it's down to the, the host of the of the event and i think any event i mean you're hosting this absolutely brilliantly come on today i mean so the the, the way of hosting is is a real art actually and I think that a lot of C-suites are, are learning how to, to host because one of the, the biggest challenge I think on video is the natural flow doesn't happen. So if, for example, even if I was running a session with a, um, a, you know, maybe 10 people around a, a boardroom yeah. table in their office in the old days, you know, any one of them could get up, walk across to the side and, and grab a tea and coffee and they sort of pour the tea and they're still listening and maybe they grab a biscuit and they come back. Mm -hmm. And it's not rude, but now nobody feels they can leave because they kind of, it's very rude if I just if I just walk off for no reason it's it's incredibly rude so so what happens now is if everyone feels stuck here um, and if people feel stuck they feel uncomfortable so we have to find ways of making people feel um, we have to create that natural flow and I think that's down to the host to to pass on um, because you know the way that when, when around a table people can just I, I could be talking and somebody can come up with a funny comment here and we all have a laugh and I go <laughs> very funny and we carry on and it doesn't really uh, or they ask a question or something but it doesn't really interrupt the flow but on zoom it does because you have to go I think I want to say something yeah where's the mute button all this goes on think, oh it's by this point the, the moment's the moment's gone on you think oh I won't say it now and so therefore everyone just sits there thinking well I won't say anything and you know and this so I think it's 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 down to us as uh, presenters and uh, the host to create a sense of flow and and kind of hand the ball but when you finish speaking you kind of hand the ball back and stop talking mm -hmm. true true um, do you do you notice that body language has changed as a result of going virtual i mean as you were saying you, know, you could get up and go get a tea and a biscuit and come back but what's to stop you from doing that now i mean if you really need to go get a bite just get up Say, excuse me, I'm off for a bit. Or yeah, no, you, like you can do, you can do, of course, but it does just, it, it feels, it feels rude. I mean, it, it's, and of course now everyone's working from home. So you do have this, oh, hang on, sorry, that's, that's the delivery bell, you know, it's the delivery yes. person. And lots of this happens, you know, and then you have, you know, you, ha you have the dog, you have the, I had one client who uh, we were doing a one-to-one -one session and uh, uh, she was uh, maybe in her fifties or something like this. And there was a, uh, an elderly man came in and he came. He said, "Oh, a cup of tea for you, darling." And he put a cup of tea down and left. And I thought, "Oh, it's probably her father and very sweet or something." And then five minutes later, the same gentleman came back in again with another cup of tea and he said, "A cup of tea for you, love," and put it down again. And then he left and she turned to the camera. And she said, "I'm so sorry. That is my father. He, he has Alzheimer's." And then five minutes later, he came back in again. So another cup of tea for you. And she was hiding these teas under the table so he didn't feel bad. So there were like 20 cups of tea under the table by the end of the session. And I think that one of the nice things about uh, this whole situation is that we, we get an insight into people's lives. And actually, we judge people much less, I think, now. I think we're, we're much more, um, you know, let's, let's see the real person. We're, we're much less judgmental than we were at the beginning, I think. That doesn't apply for yours, right, Kamal? I mean, you really don't want to see the real person. You want to see the corporate person in a lot of your instances, right? Actually, actually I, I, I tend to disagree. And I think oh, okay. that, um, you know, uh, okay, it, it really depends. You know, um, I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, um, you know, um, people follow people and people make the organizations. And actually, if you look at most, you know, even if you're looking for empirical evidence, if you look at uh, the average company, um, average size company, 
the, the CEO or the CFO or whoever, the CEO mainly or the, or the founder has far more followers than the company itself. You know, um, mm. I'm a great advocate uh, for um, our clients to be themselves. Um, it's, it's, it's very important. Um, but I, and that alludes back to the earlier point about how comfortable people are on camera, you know. Um, and, and, and you're right, I think, um, you know, Robin, I think you're right. You, people need training. People uh, need to focus on that. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, there, there's actually growing demand for on-screen uh, training. And I think that would help. But, but in a sense, um, you know, I mean, I guess there's some, you know, there are some clients maybe who aren't suited for the corporate world. Um, and I actually encourage them to still be themselves. I have a lovely client um, who is in a glove making company, for example, who grew up in Cameron Highlands, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in the farms. Uh, all his buddies are his executive directors. They grew up playing basketball. Uh, they're not the most sophisticated speakers, but they have a multi billion dollar glove company. They, um, you know, people, the, the investors love them because. Uh, they, they exude the fact that, you know, uh, they, they are very careful of the money. I mean, during the times where he could fly, even though he was a billionaire, he still flew on budget, budget planes. Um, he still jogs from meetings in Singapore because he doesn't want to take a taxi. Uh, but these are the kind of things, this, these are the kind of uh, personalities that should be shining. But sometimes when you're on a screen, you want to, you know, you, you, you button up, you, you have the ties, you know, you, 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 people tend to look very stiff. And, then, you know, if you want to look stiff, then you need to be a, you know, a huge, huge corporate. You need to be the Coca-Colas. You need to be the SIAs, uh, where, where the organization speaks louder than the CEO. So, I mean, you know, it tends, mm. I, I like these guys to speak a little bit more, yeah, and be themselves. It's, in, yeah. it's, it's interesting, mm -hmm. Kamal, because you, you say there that, um, uh, you know, people do this thing of the, doing the button up. And <laughs> the, the most common thing that people say to me is, you know, a lot of CEOs said, you know, I'd, I'd like to be like, you know, uh, well, I was going to say Obama, but both Obamas, I mean, you know, Michelle as well. Uh, and, and because they, 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 they say whether they're male or female, they said, you know, I kind of I want to look like a sound like a president, you know. And I said, well, interestingly enough, I know what you mean by that, but I don't think you do, because what they mean by that is they they want to kind of have that gravitas and slow speaking and this kind of thing. And that's appropriate if you're president of a you know, enormous country, you know, you can stand there and you say, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Right, you can kind of do that. If you do that in normal life, people go, can you just get on with it, please? I mean, <laughs> it just doesn't really work. They go, who are you? You know, so it's kind of, so I think with certain offices, you can get away with that. But I think to try to act that is, is really, and, and Michelle, from, from your, from your point of view, if you're working with some, some of the younger people, who do they aspire to? Because most of my clients, you know, would, uh, C-suite, you know, would aspire to, to be, um, have gravitas and authority. What is it that your maybe younger people on video want? What do they want? They aspire to, if it's a media personality, somebody like Gary Vaynerchuk. Okay. Gary Vaynerchuk, VaynerMedia um, CEO, and he makes, um, yeah. And come and what, on, what I is thought, it? What, yeah. I was going to say, what is it that these people have? What, what is it that, what is, the, what is the personality trait that they so, have? So Gary is very uh, authentic. He, he, okay. he just tells it as it is. And um, he quotes all his, his languages is, normally towards the um he would use some vulgarities and it comes very comes out as very natural so it's, so i think the younger generation they're after authenticity authenticity yeah mm -hmm. and and um along with um uh, kamel you, you mentioned like that the ceo wants to to uh, portray themselves be themselves so i i fully agree also because you have to show your real self and show empathy and and all when because being a leader, you have to inspire and motivate, right? So I, I, I feel like Jacinta Arden, um, mm. you know, she does a lot of live Facebook um, conversations. And um, she, she, uh, she's Prime Minister of New Zealand, right? So, but when you see her talk, right, she, she, you, she makes you feel so comfortable. And she makes you feel like we are going to get through this whole um, pandemic together. Every, and, and she's very true and, and in the, the words that she used. And it's just like a friend, although she's a prime minister and she's, that's, a, that's a huge you know, crisis that she has to deal with. So I, I find that very inspiring and, 
and sometimes being very real, just wearing a sweater. If she's prime minister, she wears a sweater. She show her house and then she says things like, you know, she mum talks as well. So, and mum jokes. So in that sense, it's kind of quite, um, I agree, you have to be real. And not too button up, you know. Sometimes that makes, makes people, um, increases the anxiety. Do you think that people can actually be who they are most of the time uh, and get away with it? Or does the mind take over? And I suppose in the case of, uh, of some of the people who are very comfortable, they are confident. They know that what they're saying, people want to listen to and want to hear, and that sort of makes it easier for them to communicate. But for a lot of people, it could be a first time, could be new to it, there's uncertainty, there's doubt. So what can you do to help these people sort of get a bit more confidence uh, going and be able to speak as they are and communicate effectively. Well, for, for, from my point of view as, as a coach, um, you know, dealing with nerves is, is, is a big thing. And it's not, uh, it's not just people starting out either. I mean, the, the, you know, the higher up an organization they go, the more visible you are, and therefore you have further to fall. You know? And I remember working with the, the boss of one of the big supermarkets, uh, global supermarkets, and, and he, said, he said, Robin, he said, can I ask you a question? And he said, I said, yeah. He said, you've watched me give a speech. He said, am I just rubbish? And I thought, this is quite a famous guy. You know? And I said, no, you're clearly not rubbish. He said, but nobody's going to tell me. This is the problem. You know, once once you get very big in very you know large corporates, is that everyone's going to say yes, you're wonderful. You know, so nobody's going to stick their neck out and say actually you need some training. So I think um, uh, everybody has this vulnerability, and I think really it's about having exercises to to deal with it. And part of them are men mental mental tricks that we can have, but a lot of it is is breathing exercises and and uh, uh, there's all sorts of things we can do. And I think for me. Voice is the, is the most important thing, and I think if we get the authenticity, and I think Michelle's absolutely right, you know, whether whether you're you know a, a twenty five year old vlogger or you know an eighteen year old vlogger, or whether you're CEO of a big organisation, I think you know we all want to be authentic, and politicians certainly, you know, and I I remember I was coaching one of the leaders uh, for the leadership campaign in the UK when we were looking for a new prime minister uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, there was there were you know maybe um, you know eight or ten of them, and and. Um, I was working with with one of my my, my uh, client, and just before he was about to give his launch, so we're we're in the ante room here and next door. He has the, the the cameras and everything's going to go live, and there's thirty seconds to go, and he's, he's checking his hair in the mirror and everything. He says, he said, Robin, he said, can I ask you something? Thirty seconds to go. He said, can I ask you something? I said, yes, of course. He said, do I look like a prime minister? And I said, well, um, you know, we have, we have 30 seconds to go. I'm not a plastic surgeon. You kind of are as you are. Um, so I think let's, let's, try and, let's try and stick with the authenticity piece right? and don't suddenly, suddenly change. <laughs> well, that's very good advice. Be who you are, right? I mean, but, well, be who you are. But of course, you know, and, and, and I often say to people, you know, you know, you know, if I said to you, just, you know, you're really good, just be a bit more comfortable in your own skin, you'll be fine. But that's 30 years of therapy for most people. So it's not, it's not, you know, it, it, so what we have to do is we have to find a way of, of, of um, getting there super fast, you know. So my job really is to try and to give what would have been 30 years of therapy to get somebody comfortable in their own skin in a couple of hours. Um, and I think that's, that's the, 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 the job of a coach really. So there was one of those questions that came through earlier uh, and somebody was asking, how do you get uh, get people comfortable enough to to do that. Um, and do you also notice that uh, there are a lot of people who uh, the body language has changed as a result of the COVID and being stuck behind a screen all the time? Do you have to read things differently? Well, yeah. the, tr the trouble is we don't we don't have all the extremities, do we? So we you know we don't we don't have the whole person. So we just have this bit here, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's 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 really. <sighs> What, what we I think what we don't get is we don't get a sense of the whole person on on video unless that person is is really consciously trying to connect so I think you know if, if I'm coaching somebody on on zoom like this it's about how you know how can we be even more human than normal so that by the time it's compressed and squashed and comes out at the other end of the computer that somebody's watching this on you know I mean, the way my voice is sounding is not you're not hearing it the way my voice actually sounds because it's depends on the microphone depends on your speaker and it's all compressed and uncompressed and so it we have to i think 
be even more human this end so that we have a chance to to have a human connection by video and one of the things of course is the camera so i mean i'm looking directly into the camera at the moment but as i'm looking into the camera i can't see my fellow panelists here right mm -hmm. But of course, if I look down at, so I have Michelle here on the bottom of my screen and, and, and Kamal there. If I look at you, I, this isn't such a good image if you see just the, my forehead most of the time. But on the other hand, we shouldn't necessarily feel we have to have eye contact for an hour and a half, right? It's, it's you know, we'd have to get married, it's too long. So I think what we, what we want to do um, with eye contact and in terms of the camera, I think is treat the camera like the person you're talking to. So, you know, you would occasionally, you, you know, you'd ask me a question, I'd look away and I'd think, and I'd come back and I'd tell you the answer, right? So we shouldn't feel locked into it, but I think we should use the camera. Uh, whenever, whenever you would naturally look in somebody's eyes, that's when you look in the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Well, that, that's good. That's a good point to bear in mind. Uh, Kamal, do you think uh, that sort of stuff would go down well with your CEOs and your CFOs that you deal with? Would they, take advice? Would they take advice well? <laughs> actually, actually, they do. I think, um, you know, this is a time where, you know, it's a new time for all of us. And we've all had been on a, a, a rapid, you know, a, a steep learning incline. And, uh, um, you know, uh, I think a lot of these CEOs want to be trained. They want to learn. Mm. And they know that this is... Uh, situation, this hybrid situation or virtual situation that we have here, we're not going to go back on that simply because it's far easier, you know, um, you know, travel time is saved, you know, we can have multiple meetings with multiple parties throughout the world. Mm -hmm. um, and if things are easier, you know, um, it's going to stay. Um, but, you know, as Robin said uh, earlier, uh, of course, you're not going to get the full 100%, maybe 90%, 85% of the person. Uh, but that's, that's very often good enough. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I so. this session wouldn't be possible if not for uh, no, mean, not at all. Not Robin at all. here. Uh, yeah, and, and you, you did mention to down, how, right. So yeah, and you did mention how to uh, you know how to uh, get these guys at ease. Uh, sometimes uh, a couple of beers or a couple of whiskeys <laughs> help. You know. Oh, I think that's very dangerous. I think that's so. I, I in in my former my former life as an actor, they used to say, "Well, we'll have we'll have." Uh, they used to act, actors used to drink port because their port is apparently one of the best things for your voice. So act, old actors would say, "Port for the voice, just just for the voice, right?" Well, actually, it's not for the voice. They wanted to kind of steady their nerves, um, but it's not it's not great. Now, what's interesting here in terms of lighting? I mean, I'm normally really good on my lighting, and I've just noticed that because it's now we started this call at five o'clock in the morning here in the UK, and of course it was pitch black outside. So I have my camera lights here. But what's happened, of course, is the sun has come up and now it's completely gone. So I'm going to leave you for one second, but I will tell you why I'm leaving. I'm just going to pull the blind across um, so that I can have some control over my lighting. So I will join you in one, one second. Let there be less light, yes. Okay. <laughs> Let there be light, no? Yeah. <laughs> Michelle, you know, yes. uh, you, are your clients sort of younger or older in general? Um. Of, of a different mix of customers, but um, they are very comfortable with using Zoom after a year since since um, since the lockdown actually. So okay. yeah, I don't think like for them learning to be uh, using a masterclass and learning how to how to be better at communicating on on the virtual world is something on their agenda. Um, perhaps. Yeah, so, but I, I find that uh, things are much more seamless these days with them. Yeah. And um, they've really, uh, we, we already know how to get on Zoom call or sometimes mobile phone, change, change in the mode of communication, um, when to show face and when not to show face, things like that. Yeah. So I, I guess most of my clients are, are pretty much uh, already um, familiarized with, with virtual tools. And they are not in the C-suite level. They are mostly um, mar marketing uh, managers, and things like that. Yeah. Mm. So, so, but I, it's, it's interesting. I, I had a client who who was a big YouTuber who got in touch with me, and I was very flattered. Um, and this is a young guy. He's only twenty-two or something. And he has maybe I don't know, sort of. 
400 million viewers or something. This is big, big user. He got in touch and he said, I'd love to um, to have a bit of training. And so we had this this conversation. We've had a couple of sessions together. Uh, and I learned as much from him, actually, I have to say, as, as hopefully he did from me. But it was it was it was really fascinating to see that um, even though there's there's an authenticity and there's a kind of looseness about it, I think a lot of people still want to do it really well. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. even if even if they kind of, even if it's the the the, the impression is Oh, I've kind of just picked up my phone and doing this. It's more around uh, how, how the message is structured so that you're not wasting people's time because people, you know, attention spans are short. And so yes. if you're going to do short videos, you kind of want to get straight to the point, but it doesn't want to look rehearsed. And that's what actors do, of course, is they learn lines. And they the most common thing people say to actors is, how do you learn your lines? And I said, yeah, but that's the easy part. The, 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 the tricky part is how do they not sound like lines? And the same with, you know, with uh, Kamal's CEOs and people, you know, is, is they can learn their speech. The question is, how does it make, how do they make it sound natural? So they're just saying, well, this is how it is, you know, even though they know what's coming next. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of this is also about the generations, right? Because the younger generation um, want to do certain things. They're more comfortable with their gadgets and with mm -hmm. uh, being able to communicate in that space. Uh, and they want to reach out to their peers. Um, on the other hand, the older generation are thrust into the situation where they've been used to so many other ways of communicating and suddenly now they have to do it in front of a screen. They have to communicate via this process. Um, and also, how many different types of uh, platforms are coming up? There's so many new things. So what do I what do? I do? What do I learn? What do I pick up on? So, you know, it's. do you think this is causing a further rift in the generational divide? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, wow. What do, what do you think, Michelle? Mm, I, I think it's just communication. So, you know, what feels most comfortable um, and depending on the kind of context. So let's say if you are to discuss social, emotional issues or you need to do a pep talk, then I we just change the mode of communication. We just let's have a face-to-face -face instead. Um, let's say it's a very work-related um, meeting. Um, let's do Zoom because at least um, we can share screen, we can do the drawings on the, the whiteboard and you can see expressions, right? So, so it's, it's really, I, I don't, I, I feel, yeah, it's really just using the, the mode of communication that is most comfortable to who you're speaking to. So if I'm speaking to my, my parents, I would, I would, call them I would I won't try to text them too much because they sometimes information get misconstrued through the text so my parents are not very good at, at, at texting so I prefer to pick up the phone and call them and give them okay please meet me here at two o'clock okay at the basement not level one yeah so it's better this way so yeah I, I think the kind of mode of communication but then something to consider yeah, but you also have things like, yeah, do, what do you use? Facebook? Do you use LinkedIn? Do you use TikTok? Uh, do you use Signal? Telegram? Uh, <laughs> you know, there's so many options and each sort of has their own sort Correct. of uh, That's very ecosystem true. of, That's very of true. Uh, and they tend to be age centric. right? So if you Correct. want to reach many, it's going to be quite a, an expensive endeavor to try and get everything lined up for each platform, isn't it? So Correct. that's what I meant. I mean, is this going to cause a lot more of a split in terms of how we are communicating because at the end of the day what we listen to is what we are comfortable uh, working with and sometimes it may not be the other platforms where there's important information as well mm -hmm. do you think I'm, there's going to be a miss out in that in that aspect i'm not too sure about that <laughs> i i feel well i'm i'm old school in that sense i just use whatsapp i just use um, sometimes telegram for for reading information and yeah skype and zoom that's about it uh, well, you still use yeah, skype yeah. that's interesting skype yes. is one of the early ones in this game and they've yeah. kind of been forgotten they've been zoomed by <laughs> I, zoom. I, think I've used, I haven't used skype for oh a couple of years i mean i think like like uh, kamal i think we had one client to use skype but um, but it's not, it's not it's not a platform I use a lot now. But yeah. um, but but I think the answer is we just we just have to understand how they all work. And and I think there's something interesting. I think what what actors have a thing where you know if you if you if you um, if you're doing a theatre show and the show starts maybe at seven thirty in the evening, 
Um, for the actors backstage, it actually starts five minutes before. It starts at 25 past. And, and so um, actors always have this thing of being five minutes early because, uh, you, you know, you can't have the curtain going up and, and somebody coming out on stage saying, saying, I'm sorry, somebody's stuck on the motorway. The, the audience don't care. The audience have paid for their ticket. They want you to be there. So I think that the, the big question for me on one of the big questions on Zoom on, on videos is, you know, do you start a meeting on time or do you wait for everyone to come? And mm -hmm. and. It's a it's a tricky one because I you know I, I think it's a bit down to the culture of the organisation but I'm I'm from a background and I know I'm old and or whatever but I also but I come from a theatre background young actors will be exactly the same is that you know if the show starts at eight o'clock you know you're there at five two because it takes a bit of time to check out these platforms sometimes you know that it's not quite the same you where's the layout and how do I how do I mute and unmute and sometimes you need to give yourself a little bit of time for that rather than coming in, uh, you know, I remember at drama college, the director said, you know, if you're coming in the building at nine o'clock with your coat on and a cup of coffee, doesn't mean you're ready to start work at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the fact you're in the building, you have to be in five minutes before, take your coat mm -hmm. off, put your coffee down at <clears> nine <throat> o'clock, you're there, you know, and I think the same. So I think we need a little bit of extra time. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. between, you know, between, so I, I always try to have you know, at least five minutes between meetings because I need to kind of turn off one um, and then log on to the next one. As if you go back to back, you're always slightly running late, I think. And that's one of the challenges of video. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kanan, I think your question is, is very interesting. I got a couple of, um, you know, at least one or two uh, interesting points to make. Um, mm -hmm. And I like to, um, you know, uh, harken it back or, or liken it or bring it back to the point of a boring world of investor relations. And how we miss the beat <laughs> with how we miss the beat with cryptocurrencies and the communications that they were putting across. You know, uh, in Singapore, I mean, you've seen the IPO market is exactly exciting. You've had great tech-based companies, you know, scrounging around for a couple of million dollars, ten million dollars. But cryptocurrency or ICOs at that point, you know, raised sixty million in a couple of minutes. Why? It's, it's, it's largely because of the point you put across is the mode of communication. People don't, people have stopped reading largely, sadly. Uh, people want video content. People want uh, readable content. Uh, your sell side analyst report from uh, JP Morgan is no longer interesting. You know, people want to be sold. People want to be uh, sold a dream. People want to be sold an emotion. Uh, and, and, and look at what crypto ICO sold. They sold a white paper. They sold, they sold ideas, you know. Yeah. Uh, nothing was ever built, you know. Um, and that's because of the mode of communication. So back to your question, are they missing out? Has that created a divide? I think initially there was a divide. But I oh. think, uh, you know, if people want to chase their money, if people are smart enough, they will evolve. I mean, uh, this pandemic has brought, brought great pain, but with pain, people evolve and we have to change and and that's why i'm a big believer in 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 pain brings change maybe it sounds a bit you know horrible to say that but i think change is for the better and we have to evolve yeah cool um well we've uh, hit the 130 mark uh, at the end of the session but uh, before we go off can i just get a sense from each of you of how long do you think we'll be continuing with virtual meetings Michelle? I think it's here to stay for a while. Uh, so let's That's all so just... Em <laughs> Hopefully, this will be the default mode of communication moving mm -hmm. forward. And um, let's just embrace all the changes there is. And I know we are living in a world of so much uncertainties. And so let's, let's uh, be kinder to each other, be a little bit more patient, and yeah spread okay. love all around <laughs> and world peace yeah <laughs> uh, and stay safe. Stay safe, um, cool. i actually think I, I very similar views to michelle but i mean i'd like to bring up the point that we are all human beings uh you know we're run on a bunch of neurotransmitters in our brain one important neurotransmitter is, is essentially dopamine and that's you know pleasure that's reward uh you know is this, is this form of communication rewarding? Uh, I think there are some merits to it, but I think I can't wait for technology to reach the next level where it gets even more interactive, even more rewarding. But at the same time, I do think when, when the, and I won't say if, I say when this pandemic is over, um, I think there will be 
a rush back to communication, a rush back to traveling, face-to-face -face communication. And I think there is so many things that we can do in person that we can't do on the camera because technology isn't there. But I think the worlds will eventually start you know, to meet eventually. Thanks. And Robin, how about yourself? Well, I, th I think obviously I agree with, with everything that people are saying. I think the, um, the interesting thing now is we have different choices. So, you know, we quite often I'll take a telephone call with somebody. Um, in, in the old days, I, if I was coaching one to one, I'd maybe do a two or three hour session with, with somebody. Now, three hours is too long on Zoom or, to, or on video. So now what I often do is we'll say we'll do an hour and a half break for a cup of coffee and then we'll come back and we'll do the, the second session on the telephone and it's interesting because I think you can have different conversations on the telephone than you have mm. on video because sometimes people are more honest if you can't see them and I don't mean that they're they're uh, duplicitous in that sense I mean they feel freer in a way because they, they can they can move around they can sit and stand and they can kind of because they're not being filmed they can be more honest about their emotions sometimes so I think some conversations are better you know uh, as, as Michelle said it's about generationally but sometimes um, you know it doesn't all have to be on video I think the way we connect we have various various uh, ways of connecting. I, I think I personally, I miss shaking people's hands. I really miss shaking someone's hand. It's just there's this there's a there's a there's something so lovely about it. And and um, and it's the kind of it's a human thing, you know, rather like, you know, the sort of biblical, let's break bread together. It's that kind of that, that, let's, let's be together, you know, and I think that we do miss that. Um, but uh, in, in a hybrid world where maybe we can get to do a little bit of that and a little bit of this and a little bit of phoning and a bit of texting and a bit of everything. And, you know, as long as all the communication is kind, um, as Michelle said, and Michelle said, and then it's a it's a it's a human connection, then, uh, you know, humanity will survive and and the, the, the humanity of humans will survive. Thank you, uh, Robin. I think uh, this session has really been about uh, how we're going to reach out to people and communicate, right? And I think mm -hmm. the hybrid sessions are probably going to be here to stay because they are efficient. And if you can, and when you can start meeting people in larger numbers, it's an opportunity to get back to getting that handshake going again. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, yeah. sanitizing your hands immediately after, <laughs> just to make sure nothing is spread. <laughs> no, no, I know. Uh, but then, you know, you also get the chance of, like in this instance, bringing Robin on into the discussion, right? So you get a richer ensemble as a result by bringing the virtual world in with the real world and maybe that's what we should look at you know see what are the positives we can find in all of this and mm -hmm. draw them together and build something stronger as we go uh, journey on into this uh, world it's certainly a lot more efficient because we can start on time end on time and carry on with the rest of our day mm -hmm. without having to commute without having to traffic or a lot of other things that get in get into mm -hmm. our way and prevent us from doing the things we want to do Thanks, uh, Michelle, Robin, and Kamal for uh, being on this Thank session. You. Great points. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Robin, look forward to being at your session on the 11th as well.